Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the AFT Show. It's episode number 10. Today's show is brought to you by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track and co-host of the podcast Off the Groove. Let's bring in our co-host of this show, the AFT Show. It's Kristen Beat from NBC Sports. Kristen, are you with us? How are you doing? I'm doing so well, just enjoying this good weather down in North Carolina, counting down the days till racing starts. I kind of got a little taste of it with uh, Supercross starting last week, getting to tune in and watch that during the week. But uh, now it's just AFT time, and I'm ready for American Flat Track to be back. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it's getting closer. It's getting closer. We're not that far away. Uh, looks like you have a desk now in your office getting everything situated at your new house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yesterday, actually, I spent all day up in the attic, shot back in the attic and working on the outside, doing some planting. So uh, slowly but surely things are coming along and I have my desk delivered. So I feel a little more grounded now. I'm not working at the dining room table. I don't have to like be so close to the kitchen. I found when I was working at the dining room table, the snacks were disappearing quicker than normal. So now that I'm further away from the kitchen, this is better for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. Well, we've got a great show in store today. We've got two riders, two fast riders from the production twins class. Not only our last year's champion, but also a rider that finished sixth in the points last year. I'm talking about Corey Texter and James the Rocket Rispoli. I'm excited about this one. Oh yeah, James Rispoli has so much personality. I mean, he is an absolute firecracker. And whenever we talk to him, we get this raw, um, uncensored uh, sort of opinion. And then when we talked to Corey Texter, I always enjoyed talking to him last year because he is so smart when it comes to racing and he knows so much of the history because his family lineage in the racing, but uh, he's very knowledgeable about all the classes because he's raced the production twins now, he's raced the singles, he's raced the twins. Like he is such a good rider in every aspect and so diverse. I'm just so excited to jump in and start talking to him. Well, let's bring him in right now, ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 production twins champ, rider number 65, Corey Texter. Hey man, what's going on? Ah, uh, just chilling, man. Just getting ready to go racing. It's 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 been a while. The QT has been rough, so I'm uh, I'm ready to twist the throttle and get back at it. I like the Pomo the Pomona shirt. Yeah, a little vintage action. I'm all about the vintage tees and stuff like that. This is actually my dad's shirt, so it's it goes way back. Um, but yeah, no, I just I'm just ready to go. I just it's been a long long few months. It was like we had an off season, then we. Almost started racing. Ah, just kidding. Another off season, so I I'm ready to go. Before we get into interviewing you, uh, you kind of called me out uh, about a week and a half ago on social media. Mm -hmm. Said I didn't want none of the smoke. Talking about maybe playing a little game of flat track Jeopardy. So uh, I'm up for the challenge. I think we we need to do it. Yeah, man. It's been a boring few months. Not a lot of trash talk going on among the riders or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fire up dubs a bit. Let's get this flat track <laughs> thing going. If there's anybody that knows as much about the sport as yeah. I feel I do, there's only a handful of guys and you're one of them. You're on the top. So I had to call out somebody that's super knowledgeable and has been around the game a long time. So yeah, man, that's a competition, whatever. It, let's get it going. That'd be fun. I think so. Um, I'll probably lose, but I'll trash talk hard leading up to it. So. That's no problem. Hey, we actually have a, a deep history. We actually worked together, uh, Flat Track Weekly Radio, uh, kind of before there was such thing as podcasts, I guess, quite a few years back. And we hosted that. We started off with Barry Boone, uh, you know, my late part announcing partner with American Flat Track. And we kind of did that for maybe what, a year and a half or so, maybe two years. And then we kind of took a break. And now both of us have our own podcast. Again, still talking about the greatest sport in the world, which is Flat Track. So I think it's pretty cool what you're doing. Uh, you bring a whole different flavor than what what we're doing here on the AFT show and what we're doing on off the groove. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I usually just crack open a land shark and just talk, talk racing. You know, I love racing. I love speaking my mind, whether it's, you know, whether or not it's, it's current or former racers and, you know, it, sometimes it's, it's well received and others it's, it's not, but I've always been a guy to speak his mind. I'm not a robotic personality. I try and let the fans know how I'm feeling and, yeah. So yeah, I, I love doing the podcast. It's been a lot of fun and it gets my mind off the daily training and racing and things like that. So where are you at right now geographically? Uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, uh, Southeastern Pennsylvania, Lancaster, where all the Amish are. So um, uh, <laughs> it's in between Harrisburg and Philly, if you're not too familiar with Lancaster, but yeah, just lots of Amish people. Quarantined. How have you been quarantining? What have you been doing during quarantine? Is uh, Cruz keeping you busy? <laughs> Uh, he's keeping me real busy, actually. He's he's a handful, two and a half years old. 
loves to ride, lo does not like to sit still. He's not a typical, you know, watch his iPad, watch cartoons type of kid. He likes to wake up early, go ride his bike, whether or not it's raining. You know, we go in the basement if it's raining, we go outside. So he's been keeping me like sane, I guess you could say, you know, it's been a rough, it's been a rough few months, just not, no racing, not, nothing going on. And every day he wakes up with a smile and he wants to play. And so it's been, uh, it's been really cool to spend time with him and, see him develop as a, a little human and, uh, and riding as well. He's, he's getting pretty good on his, uh, his little bikes. He rides. Corey, he, he was riding a strider first. It looks like he's already on a Stasic. Is that, is that the progression? And then what's next? You got him on, on a PW 50 also from, I mean, I, he's only two years old, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, trust me. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. Like he, just, <laughs> we got him a strider that like, we got him a rocking strider and then he, he loved that. So we got him a regular like push strider. He started doing that when he was like a little over a year old, he started riding his strider. And then us, a friend of ours brought the electric Stasic over yeah. and uh, his kid didn't want to ride it. And he left it in the yard. I didn't even show Cruz the bike. He just went over, picked the bike up and started riding it. And, I, and so the next day I had to go out and buy him a Stasic. So it, he, he loves to do it. Um, it's not like I'm pushing him into it because I'm enjoying like him being a baby. Like everyone wants to rush through the rush through the stages of a child of a child. And I really enjoy him, his age right now. And I don't want to rush through it. So but yeah, he's got a Yamaha PW. He rides. He's not tall enough to touch the ground. So I have to hold the rear of the bike and then I go and chase after him when he wants to stop. Like I'm jogging around. So I get a workout, too. But yeah, it's been it's been really fun. And it's an amazing thing being a father. I, I absolutely love it. So, so you're saying he kind of like gravitated towards racing himself, which I think is so cool. What advice would you give parents who are raising kids who are interested in motorsports? Like, how do you how do you choose what bikes to put them on? How do you allow that process to evolve? Do you just kind of sit back, or when they when you know they want to ride, do you teach them? How does that go as a parent? Yeah, I think just like don't rush the kids into anything. I know that's probably some cliche advice, but. It, like there's some days where Cruz wants to ride all day and there's some days we, we go to the track to ride and he wants to play in a dirt with his toys. And I, I see a lot of parents, a lot of fathers, they get frustrated because, you know, the kids don't want to ride. It's just you got to make it fun for them at this age. You know, it's very easy to get burnt out in this sport, not only as a youth rider, but even like 12, 13, 14 year old kids. They race so, so much and so long, you know, for so long prior to turning pro, they turn pro and they're just over it. So make it fun. You know, we ride together. Yeah. We don't, we just, we just enjoy it. So if he wants to ride cool, if he wants to be a synchronized swimmer, whatever he wants to do, <laughs> like I'm, I'm fully supportive of what he wants to do. And right now he, he likes to ride. I, I, I mean, I, I understand why, but yeah, we just kind of let him be a kid and we enjoy that process. And the best advice I would say is um, just, you know, understand the steps and let them have fun with it and don't push them into don't live your dreams to your kids like let them let them enjoy it and, and play with their friends and yeah have fun yeah Corey, Corey, you uh recently started being a, a race promoter i mean you've had your second annual winter throwdown down there in florida and what i like about it is you're giving back to the amateurs and you do that at the amateur nationals as well you you actually you know get a bunch of sponsorship and help for these up-and-coming amateurs why? I mean, why do you want to do that? Is that something that you want to do in the future as a promoter? And why do you sponsor and help these amateur riders so much? Um, I like the race promotion thing just because it gives me something to do in the winter. So I, I, I promote, I promote a race in the winter and I love the sport. I don't like sitting around. So I'm kind of dipping my feet in some different things to see what I want to do when I retire. I'm 32 now, so, uh, I'm not going to be racing forever. So I'm just feeling out the waters and, and just seeing what fits best for me, um, for a, a, maybe a career after I'm done racing to stay involved in the sport. And then as far as my amateur team goes, I really like helping people. I, I like helping parents. Like, um, you know, I, I've been on both ends of the deal. You know, I've, I had a lot of support from my dad as an amateur rider. And then when he passed away, we lost everything and we had to start from ground zero and, um, I know, I know what it's like to have a lot and then have nothing right afterwards. So I really like to, um, to support the kids. I like to teach them, you know, there's not a lot of pro riders that really talk to these younger guys and give them, you know, they'll give them riding advice, but I like to really help them from a marketing standpoint, how to represent yourself. You know, there's a lot to the sport that there's just not a lot of knowledge to read about. So I like to kind of give back and help out and, and yeah, it's just fun for me. I really enjoy it. I went to amateur nationals last year. I stayed the whole week, was there every single day. It was an exhausting week. Like I was there just hanging out and supporting uh, the kids I was sponsoring, but 
it was uh, it was a really cool experience and definitely want to keep keep that going and, and keep that program alive so it looks like the family's about to grow in uh you know when when racing season ends uh you're welcoming briar into the family i mean he's been a part of it for a while now but briar and shana are getting uh, married uh how how's that going to be adding him into the family <laughs> it's crazy uh to think about like not so much briar coming into our family because he's the Bowmans have been part of our family for years now, but just like the idea of Shayna getting married is just like, just crazy to me. I mean, that's my little sister. So, and then like, it just occurred to me like recently that she's going to change her last name will be Bowman. It was like, wait a minute. Wow. Like yeah. Shayna Bowman. That's just, it's very weird to me. Um, the whole like, yeah, that just, yeah, whatever. It's crazy, but no, I'm excited. I, I love Briar, man. I, he's, he's my, he's my boys. He's like a, he's family to me. He drives me nuts a lot of the time, but he's one guy that I can always call. And we, we talk probably every day for a half hour. So yeah, it's cool. I really like our, our little circle we have and, and our family and the wedding should be, I mean, I love weddings. So I'm, mm-hmm. I, I like to dance and hang out with my boys and um, hang out, you know, it, it'll be good. Like the whole, the whole experience so far, it's been really cool for Shana. You know, she's, she's hard to like, she doesn't like to have fun. Is that fair to say? Uh, she She's very serious about everything <laughs> with racing. And, you know, so f- to see this process for her picking out wedding dresses and just enjoying uh, being a girl, like, you know, like she's always a racer more so than anything. So to have her pick out a wedding dress and, mm-hmm. and things like that, it's been emotional for me to see. And uh, I love it. I'm, I'm excited for them. And I'm excited for the, for the whole experience. Mm-hmm. Kristen, can- I don't know. Go ahead. I was going to say, Kristen, I don't know if you know this, but Corey Texer is, without a doubt, the best dancer in the pit area. So well, what Corey, I was going to say, yeah, I've, yeah. Heard, I've heard stories that you are a huge dancer, and uh, that has been validated today. But I'm curious, what is your go-to dance move, or do you have, like, a go-to dance? What's your go-to song? How do you break it down? Yeah, it just depends where the beat's at. I mean, I'm, I'm good for the doggy, like a good doggy. Um you know, old school dance, like Soldier Boy, uh, any, any kind of like, it just depends like how I'm feeling, but I don't know. My mom says I'm a good dancer because when I was younger, she used to always dance with me, but she's not the greatest dancer. So I don't know, like if she's just, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of, I don't know. I just, I love it. I, I used to look up dance videos and like practice it when I was younger and I'm kind of a sleeper dance. Like, like you don't expect me to shoot in with the rhythm and then like the song gets going and you got to drag me off. I can't stop. Just keep, keep it rolling. <laughs> so you're going to be that guy at Shana's wedding. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I've actually taught Briar a few good dance moves. Like I taught him like the comb in the hair move and putting it in your pocket. And then, and then, so now, now Briar kind of tries to dance a little bit and it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's yeah, it's, it's fun. Like I said, I, I enjoy having fun with my, with my friends and dancing at the wedding. I can't wait. It's going to be sick. Awesome. Let's talk some racing, Corey. Last year, 2019, you won the Production Twins Championship. It was a hard-fought battle. It wasn't nothing easy, although it started off easy. You won the first three rounds. You won Texas Half Mile, the SoCal Half Mile, and the Red Mile in Lexington. It looks like it looked like you're going to run the tables, and then you kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, walk us through the first off, the first three wins. How cool that felt to win, you know, uh, two half miles in a mile right off the bat. And then what happened for a little while? And how did you pick the momentum back up to finish off the season? Uh, yeah, you mentioned it was it, it was easy. It looked like it was easy when I started. It wasn't it, even winning. It wasn't easy at all. You know the um, the first race at Texas when I won, I had to get past a very fast Dalton Gautier, you know, to win that race. And then Paris and uh, and Paris, I had to hold off Ryan Varnes. And then Lexington, I had to hold off Colby Carlisle to win that race. So none of it was easy. Lima, I got a close second. Um, I just had a few bad races. We tried. It was the first year with my team, so we were trying different setups and things like that. So it was a learning year, really. I mean, we won the championship, but we were learning so much throughout the year. And we tried a couple setup things at certain tracks that obviously didn't work. You know, I certainly didn't expect to finish ninth at the first Springfield. That was, if you told me that was going to happen, I, I would have been like, I would, I would not have been ha- uh, happy with that. And I certainly wasn't. So. And then we moved on throughout the year. I, I, we brought on Chris Carr as my rider coach. Uh, he's a guy that I looked up to. My dad used to sponsor Chris, and he's just a good friend of mine. I, I call him Uncle Chris. You know, we, we go way back, and I like to irritate him a bit. And we still talk frequently. I check in with him from time to time, and uh, he just had a birthday not, not too long ago. So he's 
so yeah, he's he's getting up there and he's got a lot of knowledge and I love the guy. So we brought him on and he was able to help guide me through the mental aspects of leading a championship because I've never been in that position before. And it's 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 different, you know, than than chasing people, being that guy being chased. So I don't think anything it was it was just um it, we had a short season. I just had a couple bad races that kind of tightened things up and you know, the biggest thing for me was trying to finish the season strong and uh, I was hoping to do that at Meadowlands. You know, I felt really good there. We had a, unfortunately had a mechanical with like a lap and a half to go. I felt like we had that in the bag. And um, so, yeah, it was it was an up and down year. We learned a lot. And, you know, I'm back with the same team for next year. And I think we're or sorry, this season, I think we're going to be really strong. You mentioned Meadowlands. What was going through your mind on that final lap? I mean, did you already have the points kind of calculated? Were you looking at where other guys were on the track? Uh, to be honest, I knew exactly what I had to do, where the points were, every scenario. I mean, I'm a, I'm a thinker, so I knew exactly. You know, when I saw Colby broke, um, I was super content sitting in second. I was gonna push as hard as I needed to, but I wasn't gonna overdo it. And uh, I think I could have pushed a little harder, and we could have made a race out of it. But I was, he was hungry, he wanted to win, and I was content just following him around and and, and taking it home and, and getting second. And then when he broke. You know, I, I was like, it was just a bonus for me. So I I, I kind of like, as soon as he broke, I instantly relaxed. I'm like, all right, let's just ride and have fun and try and win this race. And mm -hmm. I felt great. And like two or three laps ago, the bike started slowing down. And then all of a sudden, like coming to the, I think it was two to go, it just it just completely shut off. And um, it was a bummer. I, I was very upset. And everyone was like, oh, you looked upset. Like you didn't. You didn't know you won the championship. I was like, no, I knew I won the championship. I just wanted to win that race. I wanted to finish the year strong as well as, you know, as I started the year strong, you know, I wanted to win. I want to win races. You know, the championship's cool, and it's been a gold mine my whole life to to earn that. And But I just want to, I want to win. Like, I'm super competitive, and I just want to win races. So to uh, have a mechanical, it was just uh, unlucky, and it was a bummer. Corey, in 2020, you're back with G&G Racing. Um, talk about the team dynamic. You, you got along with those guys right off the bat, it seemed like. They've been in the game for a little while. Uh, for the people that don't know, what does G&G &G stand for? And, and how, how, how did your, your chemistry work so well? It seemed like right off the bat. Well, they're complete opposites of me. Like, they're very easygoing. They're quiet. I'm, like, in your face, high, strong. And, and our, con our, our contrasting personalities really fit well together. And, and they're great. G&G &G stands for Gronick and Gronick. It's LJ and John, Little John and Big John. And they're just a fa uh, father and a son team based out of Yucaipa, California, Southern California. And, you know, they, they're just, they just work really hard. They, they don't have a lot of resources. They, they love to do it. They love to compete in flat track. And, and yeah, I love working with them. I just talked to LJ a little bit ago and talking about the bikes and the Q team and things like that. And just, they're staying busy. Like they're as motivated as they were last year, which is really cool to see. They're working on um, some, some new stuff for this year that I've been really excited about. I think it's going to really help elevate our program. And, you know, just for me, it's just never settling. Like to win the championship was cool and I enjoyed it. And I had, you know, a week or two where I, I, you know, relaxed a little and, and sat back and enjoyed it. But then it was like, let's get back to work. Like everyone, you know, you have a target on your back now and everybody's coming for you. So it's just, um, it's always working toward that next goal for me. And, um, yeah, you know, I watched the, the last dance, the Michael Jordan documentary and oh, so good. just got a lot of motivation, like, like the way Michael's mindset is and even Kobe and those guys, um, you know, I, I'm not saying I have as much talent as they do, but my mindset is similar. Like I always want to keep digging and keep working and, um, to watch that documentary, it was, you know, I've watched it three times so far, all of all ten episodes. So wow. it's it's been a it's been a really motivating thing for me, and yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited for the year with my team. Yamaha is helping out a little bit with with our program, and and I, I I love the Yamaha. I love my team. I I love the guys I'm working with, and for me, it's all about being comfortable in the situation more than anything. I just want to have fun. I'm 32. You know, I, I enjoy racing and. For me to do the my best, I just want to have fun with it. And I think loyalty is it's something that doesn't get talked about enough in this sport. It's a shame, you know. It's it, it's all sports, really. I mean, everyone's always chasing new rides or new dollar amounts and things like that. And for me, it's not about, you know, going out there and being the richest guy, making the most money. I want to enjoy it. I want to have fun. I want to win races. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of part of the process that I, that I look at when I make my decisions. Corey, you mentioned Yamaha, and 
uh, it's not the most popular bike in the production twins class. So why the choice to, to run the Yamaha and, and what do you like about the Yamaha so much? It should be the most popular. It's, it's the one that wins a lot of races, I think. So, um, yeah, I love the MT-07. I think it's a great bike. It's, it fits my riding style. Well, it, it hooks up it, you know, the, the chassis that we had last year was a great chassis and we're working with something new for this year. And yeah, I don't know. I, I've loved, I love every aspect of the Yamaha right now. And I'm excited to be back on the bike this year. I think it over the course of a season, you know, it's a long, a long season, back-to-back -back races. I think it gives me the best chance to win another championship. So, um, and I have a year on the bikes now, which is helpful. So yeah, I'm excited. I, I love, I love the bike so far. Okay, so I think we lost Scotty. He's out in Oklahoma. I don't know if he has the best internet. Maybe some uh, tumbleweeds get in the way out there. But, uh, Corey, we still want to keep talking to you, and I'm kind of curious, looking at the revised schedule, what we have to look at now, which track do you feel like you'll be able to be most successful at on the, on the schedule that we're looking at? Well, it's kind of funny. Looking at last year, I thought my best tracks were going to be, like, the good ones I did the worst at. So, like, Rapid City and Springfield – I thought they'd be my best finishes and they were my worst of the year. And then mm -hmm. I, I was not looking forward to Texas and I went out and I won that like by a straightaway. So for me, yeah. if I ride my best, I feel like I can win on any given track or any given day. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, getting the bike dialed in, getting good starts, which is important. And I feel like I do that well. And, you know, it's uh, I, the schedule's great. I, I love it. I think it's cool. I'm, I'm excited to to race at all the racetracks on the schedule you know I'm, I'm excited there's none that i really am bummed about so each what do you one think has... about the season at volusia are you excited about that because i know a lot of uh riders have expressed interest in racing at volusia if they hadn't already and guys who have raced there are excited about going there yeah i have a lot of laps at volusia i've been racing there since man like 2006 so i have a lot of laps there and it's daytona ish you know it's it's uh florida i love going to florida it's like a second home to me and yeah, Volusia's it's it's a really fun racetrack. They have World of Outlaw races there. That mm -hmm. the track's phenomenal at nighttime. It's been a while since I've raced there at night, so I'm amped up. I'll, I'll race in a parking lot right now. I don't care. I just it's been so long. I just want to race, but schedule looks cool. I'm I'm really really happy with what AFT put together as far as the schedule aspect. And you know, it's uh it's it's feeling it's it's good that we get the race this year and and we have as many races on the schedule as we do. Well, Corey, thank you so much for welcoming us into your home and um, enjoy talk with you. And I'm sure that everyone's looking forward to seeing you back on the track. So we are going to go to break, get a message from Dunlop Tires and uh, be back with James Spoli in a little bit. So Corey, thank you so much. And you take thank care. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. The ones who never stop. The ones who never quit. Round and around. We don't make the champions, but we do make the tires. We, we, we are done off. Are done off. Done off. Welcome back to the American Flat Track Show, presented by Dunlop Tires. We've got James Rispoli, the Rocket Rispoli, on with us. We're still waiting for Scotty. We're not sure if he'll be able to pop back in or not. But uh, James, thanks so much for hanging out with us. What are you up to? Just realistically, all I do is ride a bicycle and golf at the moment. Um, and a little bit of testing, um, mm -hmm. moto, just kind of going to be a little bit exiled from social media and stuff like that and just kind of hunkered down and just doing a lot of training and, you know, trying to stay off the radar at the moment. Yeah, just focusing. You mentioned your golf game. Did you watch the the Tom Brady Peyton matchup? Oh, yeah, that was funny. That was really well, did you learn anything about trash talking? <laughs> I think I've got that pretty handled. I do need to <laughs> relax on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um. You mentioned taking a break from social media. Why is that? Just, you know, with everything going on, I just, it was a good time for me. Florida was pretty good where we could still go outside and be on a bicycle and do certain things. So for me, it was a good time to really just get my training back. Um, and it was like, uh, you know, a lot of people have, it's kind of like another off season for us. So for me, I just been on the bicycle, just kind of doing what I did when I won my championships and I've just kind of reintegrated everybody into the program. And for myself, it's just 
full force. It's a big deal for me. Um, I got a lot of support, so I want to make sure I can, you know, deliver the gig. Mm -hmm. How many miles are you biking a day, like on average? Between, uh, it's between 40 and 70. Holy cow. Like Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, Thursday. <laughs> we do 100. It's just, it's, it's way excessive for riding a motorcycle, but it's mm -hmm. fun at the moment and it's, uh, I'm getting a lot of gains, so it's, it's okay. A lot of people may not know that your road racing background um, has taken you all over the world. So you've done racing in Europe. You lived in Europe for a long time. A lot of your fan base, European. Um, how has that shaped you as an American flat track rider? Yeah, no, it's definitely helped me a lot, especially with the technology that's going on in, in flat track. Since I left flat track, it's coming back. It's uh, the technology has gone crazy. You know, like carbon fiber, you know, uh, bodywork, all like data ecus electronics wheels like it's kind of gone more into the road race side so for me um bringing it from the road race into dirt track i think i have a a good aspect on that and a lot of the tracks where i used to struggle on like a lot of the clay half miles where there's a lot of roll speed i've learned from the road race by keep wheels in line and corner speed so it's kind of helped me as far mm -hmm. as that so yeah, I've learned a lot, and it's very exciting for me to kind of come back into the sport, seeing the huge changes and seeing uh, the huge excitement and how much it's grown since I've left. You know, I was kind of a, a B. I was pro for a few years before I left. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was Peoria. Um, I noticed you had a, a stack of papers, and you were making notes. I mean, why were you doing that? I know we talked about it, but what was kind of behind that, and why, as a road racer, did you bring that over to AFT? Yeah, I mean, stuff can get pretty complicated uh, really quick. And uh, for me, it was it's like it's a road race thing. Everybody's got a track map and stuff like that. And for myself, it's just kind of I'm, I'm scatterbrained as it is. So when I come off a track, it's like, oh man, it's just doing this, it's doing that. It's turn one, it's turn three, it's over the jump, I'm tank slapping. So it's like an easy way for me to kind of go one, two, three, four, put it in order, and go, oh no, this is the bad part. This is what we to prioritize. This is where the work you know, the, the, the most time I'm losing is because of this problem. And it just kind of gives me uh, a lot of things to look at. I'm super visual, uh, you know, so for me, I can look at it and I can visualize on the track and things like that. So it's, yeah. it's an easy way for me to transition. People look at me like I'm going back to school or like, hey, dude, you going back to school or what? Well, you had your pencil and you're making these notes. And I was like, oh, that's so neat to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, 2019. Finished third three times, and then a second at the Springfield Mile. So, I mean, always a bride, but never a bride. You were so close to those wins a few times this season, but, I mean, just unable to close. What, what, how did you, what did you, how did you see that season? I mean, was there ever a moment when you were like, I just want that top spot? What, um, tell me about your 2019 season. Yeah, definitely Springfield. We thought we had it, you know, uh, especially when Dalton kind of broke, kind of left me out there by myself. Um, but then didn't do it. So, you know, like you said, I've kind of always just been one step away, but, uh, it's, it's good. It's given me plenty of motivation. Last year was kind of a super learning year. I mean, that Harley program kind of started, uh, for myself, second round into production series. It was kind of a joke in the beginning and turned very serious, very quick when it was, we got super competitive. Um, and when Dalton came on board, it was like, all right, we're running pretty big here and now we're being on the podium all time. So uh, for myself, yeah, we've had, a, we, it was a big learning year. They were running a big program. Um, and myself and Dalton did really well. Dalton actually, he got a couple wins and, you know, that was really good for Harley Davidson and, and everything that came through. But, one of those. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think we could have had a couple. Uh, we had a couple mechanicals that probably left us maybe close, closer, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it is what it is. It was close, but no cigar. So at the end of the day, we got to go back to the drawing board, throw some more stuff at the wall, and see what sticks. Gave you a lot of fuel for the off season, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. 2020, you're working with George Latis. Um, am I saying that right? I know that he's very particular about the pronunciation, but am I saying Latis? Yes, okay. it's yet. Yeah. Latis Racing. George Latis Racing. Um, kind of discuss that. I mean, he has a, a great lineage and history in racing as well. And how did you guys come together? How did that all pan out? 
Well, before I even go into it, you know, a little serious side and just thank Mr. Latis and uh, my personal sponsors, David at ProBeam, uh, my cousin mm -hmm. Dynamics for staying by us and as well as everybody at American Flat Track. It could have easily tumbled pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot of people in the world that were out without jobs and thankfully George was able to keep me on and uh, David and ProBeam and Cust Dynamics helped me a lot and all my other personal sponsors. So a big shout out to them to keep me so I could keep training. Um, I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. But uh, yeah, me and Mr. Latest have a, have a unique relationship because I actually raced against his team when I won my one of my super sport championships. So I've done a lot of racing against uh, Mr. Latest uh, about 10 years ago in road racing. So we know a lot about each other. We've raced hard against each other. Um, I ended up beating their team in that championship. So I'm sure it didn't feel good at the time, but I was actually going to ride for him before I rode for Michael Jordan. Um, so the, there was a huge potential to be able to step into his team when I was road racing. It never happened. So kind of 10 years later, when I come back and dirt track, it's kind of full circle and he's, you know, created a team again. And it was kind of just like a, a match made in heaven, really. Cause I know he knows a lot about road racing. We speak the same terminology which is huge in our sport um and somebody like you know smoking joe pop i mean to have, have him on board is huge as well so yeah. it's uh, it's kind of a dream team right now i mean smoking joe pop being able to kind of be your crew chief and mentor this year has he given you any advice already what what is that relationship like yeah it's really really good it's funny um you know we go to the sometimes we go to the test track and he'll get on the bike and it's like it's the little things that I don't know. Maybe it's I'm not particular, and he's he jumps on my on one of the bikes or my bike, and he'll be like, "Dude, like, how are you riding this thing? Your handlebars are all screwed up." And I'm like, <laughs> Dude, I don't know. So we'll change it. I'm like, "Hey, man, that feels pretty good." But other than that, you know, him being a little bit slower than I am, but uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. I'm just messing. He's, so uh, this year you're back on the XG750. I mean, what do, what do you make of that bike? Are you happy with it? Yeah, so we've uh, we have a couple XGs, uh, 750s, and kind of the same program. We uh, we picked them up. We've done a lot of testing. I would say we're probably one of the the teams that are doing the most amount of testing. That's one thing that uh, latest motors racing do very well is they're kind of when they're in, they're all in. Um, so we've been doing a lot of testing. It's been amazing to bounce ideas off with Joe, uh, especially because he's got such a history in riding twins, whereas I don't have a big history in riding twins. So mm -hmm. it's good. And the good thing as well is me and Joe, we, we ride kind of similar. So it's, it's, it's been really, really good. Everything's been really good. The bikes are, I think have gotten a little bit better. We've developed them even further than last year. We're doing things that we want to try and that we didn't really have time for because the season was so crazy last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of uh, the good thing as well is about being kind of our own team. You know, Mr. Latest has always developed his own stuff. So kind of, you know, taking a step in that direction where we don't have to be so, so reliant on the factory helps us and helps, you know, give them breathing space, you know, where we go back to back races and, you know, it would be hard to get, you know, five motorcycles ready to go racing. You know, that's a big, tall ask. So, um. What do you like about the XG750? I mean, when, when we're on the, the Instagram, the Facebooks, we see everybody's kind of feedback of it, but what do you like about this bike? I think the sound. The sound's pretty good. Um, <laughs> it, it, Can you mimic the sound? Do you like the sound? Good, like, just idling around. You know, if I could just roll around the pits, it's good. I, I just like it. It's, 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 got, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a unique bike. But as far as the racing goes, um, especially in the production class, it's got, it's got a lot of good qualities. You know, they've built a pretty good bike, uh, for, you know, that class particularly. Um, mm -hmm. and for, for us, you know, the chassis is really good. It's got good engine characteristics. You know, a lot of things about that bike kind of mimic, uh, the road race side of things. It's a heavier bike, which is somewhat a dif disadvantage on some of the bigger tracks where we get past and whatnot, but for us, it's it's better because this year, you know, with the condensed schedule, we it looks like we only have one mile maybe, um, you know, Springfield. So, and we did well there, and everything else looks like kind of a clay half mile. So, for us in the Harley, that's you know outstanding. We're sitting over here just you know licking our chops. What are you, what are you doing? You're licking your chops. 
You're ready to go to town? Wow. Um, it's, someone's going to a buffet after this. Um, production twins are going to race all the rounds in 2020, which, I mean, for you, because you were kind of doing double duty at a few races. I don't feel like it's going to tax you too much, but what is your perspective of racing every single round, you know, with the twins and with the singles class? Uh, it's good for me. Uh, you know, Harley put up, as everybody knows, a very hefty contingency. Um, mm -hmm. So the more races, the more chances for us to make some more money. Um, you know, we know racing is expensive, but, uh, you know, for us, that's one big perk. The other perk is we, we get more chances to win, you know, and um, for us, that's even even better. You know, like it was kind of it's kind of a shame, you know, knowing that we can't ride TTs, but I totally get it. It's a huge act to build a TT motorcycle, especially on a twin. Um, you know, so for us, it, it's good. Uh, I'm very happy, uh, you know, and it was, it was hard last year to know that you went to a couple tracks that production wasn't at and you had to ride a single. I much rather ride the twin. Um, it's the direction I want to go, uh, you know, for my future is to get to the super twins class. So for me, the, it's, this is a win-win and, you know, with the back-to-back -back races and, you know, mm -hmm. for myself on the East coast this is pretty big for me. So yeah, yeah I'm just, I'm loving it. Um, what track on the schedule are you most excited for? Anything with a bank, that's clay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few of those this year, so that's fair. Uh, um, also, I would say Lima, we did well. Um, I like yeah. Lima, pea gravel. I seem to do really well there. I grew up on that stuff as a kid. That's all I raced. Um, that's where I generally won all my like amateur races, was always on the big half miles. Um, so I'm pretty diverse with everything is there anyone that you've kind of targeted and said this guy i need to make sure i'm in front of this guy he's the one to beat this season who's your biggest competition i mean you could see it last year obviously Corey's going to be fast we know that he didn't get the number one for you know no reason uh mm -hmm. you know, ryan barnes he did really well towards the end we don't really know what chad's doing yet so and a lot of the other guys you know they're gonna run singles they're gonna run twins back-to-back -back races that now become mm -hmm. a bit more, more logistic you know, logistical nightmare to run two classes, singles and twins. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who shows up. But, you know, those two guys are going to be right at the top. I'm sure I'm forgetting names, but, you know, for us, it doesn't really matter. You know, we're there to do one job is to win races. You know, like I did when I was racing in Super Sport, on good days, we're going to win. On bad days, we want a podium. And, you know, that should lead to a championship. So right. kind of it, and we want to reduce mechanicals as much as possible and just run a good clean effort and have fun. You know, that's the one good thing about, you know, being with George and Joe and the whole team, even uh, Cody caught, like, it's just kind of like a, a really fun vibe. You know, there's nothing too serious, even though we all want to win, but we kind of keep the vibes and, uh, you know, we're always joking and laughing and, yeah. you know, so, so. Um, at Daytona, when we talked for media day, it seemed like you kind of had a chip on your shoulder. Um, is that chip still there? And I mean, how are you feeling going into this season? Did quarantine help you guys a little bit because you had more time? I don't know if quarantine helped, but it definitely uh, was able to get more prepared. You know, I'm sure people, more, most people either took more time off or didn't, I don't really know. But for me, myself, I just took it into another gear. I pretend, you know, the season's going to end technically around the same time. So I kind of just mm -hmm. hold the training like we're in season. You know, I didn't really let up, um, you know, kind of backed it up on a couple things, but just try to keep the intensity high because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I'm getting paid to do. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a chip. Like, at the end of the day, you know, like I want to be in the Super Twins class. It didn't happen, but, you know, I was given, you know, a great opportunity with George and Latest Motors Racing and Joe. And, you know, I couldn't be more happy with the team and what happened. And I think it's probably the best opportunity that I could have gotten, you know, mm -hmm. just looking at it as a whole, you know, a whole pizza pie, I've got all eight slices and it's, you know, it seems really good right now. So what kind of pizza is it? I just like, just depends where I'm at. If I'm in Italy, you know, I definitely like, you know, a really nice, very thin, thin base, mm -hmm. you know, good, just margarita pizza. Um, over here, a little bit more, you know, best of just kind of cheese pepperoni. I don't really go too fancy, you know. I don't, I don't want to upset the apple cart. You know, if everybody's here. <clears throat> you know, for myself, I've, everybody knows I kind of do a lot of hats and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of JR hats. Uh, my 
one of my other boys from the ashes hooks me up with a lot of hats but if everybody shares this and comments with the hashtag hogs foley and your favorite racetrack or your favorite race of the year i'll pick five winners or we as collective will pick five winners um and we'll send you a free hat you know jr hat okay so let's repeat that everyone comments on the bottom of this hashtag hogs foley yes yeah. show them the back so they know how to spell it hogs foley yeah. hashtag hogs foley at the bottom of this you're gonna get some free swag from james foley himself Hashtag yeah. Hogs Foley, y'all. Hogs Foley, and then also <laughs> comment your favorite racetrack, you know, the ones that you want to see that you're most excited for. Um, and and share. want to see James Foley on the top spot at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And make sure you share the post because we want this to really, really, really go out. You know, we really want this to go. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, James, thank you so much for your time. And we just want to big give a big shout out to Dunlop Tires for sponsoring the American Flat Track Show, Dunlop Tires. I will be using those all season in the American Flat Track Series. And James, thanks so much for hanging out with us. You take care, have fun, work on your golf swing. We'll see you uh, uh, in Volusia. Yes, yeah. See you guys soon. The ones who never stop. The ones who never quit. Around and around. We don't make the champions. But we do make the tires. We, we, we are dumb. Are dumb. Are dumb. Are dumb.